so uh, we talked about uh, uh, net gateway uh, before net gateway was uh, introduced uh, there used to be another option which was uh, using a net instance so what it did was uh, as we talked in in theory there is a private subnet which is the backend subnet this is the place maybe where your database is where your critical data is and it's behind a firewall and then you have your web servers which actually connect to the outside internet through a internet gateway so the client requests come through from the internet gateway to the web servers and those are then uh, sent to the database uh, to query the database now as we mentioned sometimes the servers and resources within a private subnet would need to connect to the internet in order to update the software send out error messages and other things maybe for troubleshooting uh, sending out messages to the vendor so how do you connect those servers and databases to the internet uh, in the past they used to do was they would create an instance like any other compute instance and they would make that instance as a gateway and there would be a kind of a tunnel going to this instance then this instance would connect directly to the internet so any queries the servers or the backend databases needed to make they had to go through the instance in order to get to the internet so the benefit was communication always is initiated by the the backend instance so for some reason someone tries to hack in to this net instance and tries to get to the data they won't because the instance will not entertain any queries uh, unless it is initiated by the instance itself so it is it only works that way so this was good i mean this did work but it didn't scale the reason it didn't scale because uh, in order for this whole thing to work you needed to update the security list you needed to update the route table you had to maintain so anything changing here would have needed to be modified into the the secure list and the route table so it was not scalable so what they introduced uh, October 2018 is a gateway like your internet gateway they provided a net gateway instead of going through the public instance now it can go directly through a gateway net gateway which actually does the same thing what the the net instance did in the previous versions so the gateway you can connect to the gateway and the gateway then connects to the internet now the benefit is the net gateway itself has a ip static ip address till until the life of the gateway so no modifications need to be done no modifications need to be done to the security list it is a one time net gateway route table you need to update and that's it and you can scale then you you could have multiple instances which need to connect you can add remove and they all will be able to connect to that net gateway so if you were to go to the older version the more instances you added here down the road you needed to go and update the security list the route tables and all those details which you don't need to do with this net gateway so enough of theory me do the lab it is should be fun and should be quick hopefully if everything works we've all worked on a VCN in the past so I have a virtual cloud network which has close to three subnet one two and three different AD this is the one I created with the option create a VCN with the resources I chose that option and this is where I am so when you look at this part the subnets there and if you were to go back to the the diagram so this is the public IP here so that's the VCN we don't have the private IP yet we don't have the net gateway yet so we are going to work on that next 
which connects to the client. And let's go to, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a route table. Um, so let me create a route table. And, I'm, and this route table is going to be used with the net gateway. And for now, we are not going to select any routes. We are just keeping it blank. We'll update that later once we have a net gateway. So what we did here, we created a route table only without any details yet. We will modify that once we have the gateway. That's what we did. Then we are going to add a private subnet. So we are going to create a subnet. We are going to name it private. We we'll keep it in the first availability domain. And we just want to make sure we don't overlap any of the others. So I'm going to be on the safe side. I know 0, 1, 2, 3 are taken. Maybe I'll just use 5 for now. You want to make sure none of the subnets are being used by the public subnet because it will not work. For route table, we just created that route table, which is the net route table. And this is going to be a pri private subnet. So we're going to mark that. Uh, we leave everything default. And we'll create this. So we should have a private subnet soon showing up here. And there it is. So what we've done so far, we've created the route table. We have not updated. We've created this private subnet. We just created that and that VCM. So now we are going to create an instance. So we all know how to create an instance. We are going to go to the instance. And I'm going to say create instance. I'm going to name it private. I'll leave it in AD1 because that's where we created our private subnet. We're going to leave everything default. We're going to paste the SSH keys. We're going to keep it same. We are going to be in the virtual cloud network. For subnet, we are going to select the private subnet because it's a private instance. So this is a database instance. So it's going to take a while to provision that. What we need to do is we don't have the instances in the subnet, the public instance yet. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to name this public. And I'm going to select AD2. I could select AD1 because we have three public subnets. I'll select AD2. The reason is because if you have a free trial, you are only allowed one instance in an availability domain. So try to select a second one so you don't get error out. We're going to keep everything the same. We're going to paste the SSH keys. We are going to use the public subnet too because that's the AD we signed the instance to. So they are being provisioned. So we have two instance in creation. So private is done. So use, as you say, there is no public, uh, public IP address to the private instance because it's in a private subnet. And it is only the private IP address. So it has no internet connection. So it cannot talk to the internet at this stage. Now, if this is where your database was and this is the server which needs to update the software, fetch the software from the internet, then we are in a fix because we cannot do that. So at this stage, you understand the concept of having a net instance. So while it's doing that, what we are going to do is we'll, I'm going to load this. It would have a different IP address. So a couple things we need to change here. We all know we first need to get the authorized key. 
that is from your first key. Uh, second thing what you need to do is you need to make sure you've allow agent forwarding. You've selected that. You selected a tunnel. You've selected local ports, except connection from other host. Uh, now, the the difference here is our private IP. This is an old one, so I'm going to remove this. What we need to do is we are pre creating a tunnel. Uh, so what are we are going to do is we are getting this instance, the private instance, to go through the public instance we created. So we are going to create a tunnel. So we are providing the instance private IP. Source port is 222. Destination is 222. So we are going to add this. And we are saying local ports accept connection from the other host. So we are saying allow the connections. Now let's go back to our session because our IPs have changed. This is an older IP I had. So I'm going to go back to the instance. And this is the public IP. And it's done. So we'll wait for the IP to generate. The IP is here. So this is in the public subnet. So as you say, it's public. We will be able to connect. So we are going to connect to the public instance, but we are saying a couple things. We are first of all providing the authorized key, the private key. We are saying allow agent forwarding and make sure all of this are marked, are checked, the ones which you see on my screen. Then we go to the tunnel. And what we did, we went to our private instance. And this is the IP for the private instance. We took that IP. We put it here with the source port of 222, 42s. We put the destination as 10.0.5.2.2.2. That's the destination port. And we said local ports accept connections. So we saying the public instance accept connections from a private subnet. Okay, and we are going to connect to the public sub uh, public instance. So here we are. Now you can also go to the event log, and if you go down, you will see that port forwarding is is being done for our private instance. Okay, so we are logged into a public instance. Now let's open up another party session. And this time we are going to log into our private chain. So let me load that. Only thing what we are going to name it here as the local host, port as 222. We are going to provide that. In the tunnel, we are going to to remove this and add our, this is our private IP. I'm going to add that. We are going to do the local port. We'll go back. We're going to name this as local host. I'm going to save this and say open. So we are connected to a private instance. Now say a database is here and needs to connect to the internet. And we want to say, for example, ping Google. It won't let us. Because it's in a private subnet. So now here's where the net gateway comes in play. So let's go back. 
we'll go to our network. So here's the net gateway. We're going to create net gateway. We're going to say, give it a name, net gateway. So before I click OK here, let's go back to a diagram. So we created the public instance. We created the private instance. And we are adding a net gateway. Make sure to add the route rule for any subnet that needs to use this net gateway. So we remember we create a, a route table for the net gateway. We are going to update that now. We are going to select the target type as net gateway. And we are going to work with the whole of internet. So we are saying all of internet can connect through this net gateway. We are selecting the net gateway, the one we created, and we say save. So once we do that, what happens to our private instance? It start working. It's able to connect to the internet. So it can ping any of those, but important thing you have to keep in mind, there is still security here because it is being initiated from here, not the outside internet is trying to contact and that won't be able to do that because of the gateway. Uh, another thing of beauty about this gateway is for some reason if the net gateway, let's go to the cloud. And if you decide that you don't, you want to block traffic, I can click this. And if I go over here, uh, and if I were to say, It's blocking traffic. It's a click of a button. And this you can add it to your code also if you need to do some maintenance. And if I were to go back and say allow traffic, and it's available, and there it is. It's pinging the, pinging Google. So that's it for NetGateway. Hopefully uh, this is easy to understand.